So um, we've started to um, analyze our matching model uh, of the labor market. Um, so we've showed how to compute the labor supply, which characterizes the um, amount of employment that uh, workers are able ach to achieve through the matching functions and the flows on the labor market. We've computed the labor demand, which shows the number of workers that firms want to hire when they maximize their profits, um, given uh, labor market tightness. We've explained what the equilibrium condition was in the matching model. The equilibrium condition being that um, the labor supply and the labor demand have to be equal. So the tightness in equilibrium is such that um, supply is equal to demand. So this provided us with a model that can explain um, why unemployment prevails um, in equilibrium, you know, why unemployment is something that we um, always observe on labor markets. Now the next step um, is to try to explain not only why there is unemployment, but also why unemployment moves um, the way it does. So you remember when we um, looked at empirical evidence about the labor market, we saw that unemployment is fluctuating systematically. Uh, vacancy, uh, vacancies and also vacancy rates are fluctuating systematically over the business cycle. And accordingly, the labor market tightness is also fluctuating systematically over the business cycle. So these are not um, quantities that remain constant over time. These are quantities that actually move a lot over time. And of course, um, we would like to have a model that can explain uh, that. Can explain that. So let's just uh, have a quick look at the empirical evidence that we, uh, that we had already seen, just to remind ourselves of what we are looking for and what are the type of fluctuations that we want our model to be able to explain. Um, so this graph, uh, you, rem you remember, um, this is a graph that shows you um, the unemployment rate in the US since 1948 to actually uh, just the last few months. Um, and um, the recessions are uh, indicated by gray areas as usual. Um, so what can we see here? As we, as we had said, so there is always unemployment, of course, in the labor market. And in fact, here, if you computed the average of the unemployment rate from 1948 to today, you get 5.8%. Okay, uh, so that would, be, that would be your average. Uh, you know, the average amount would be uh, somewhere here. something like that, that would be about 5.8%. Um, and then what you can see, of course, as we had discussed, is that on the unemployment rate systematically is going to go up as the economy enters recession. Uh, so we can see, of course, a recent example. So here we have a huge increase in unemployment as we enter the Great Recession. Um, and then, of course, more recently, here you have a massive increase in unemployment that corresponds to the current um, COVID recession. Okay, um, but as you can see, if you go back in time, systematically, unemployment is going to go up in recession. So we we'll want to understand, um, you know, why the unemployment rate goes up in recession, what's going on on the labor market that explain this big increase in unemployment and also we want to understand like what are the type of disturbances um, that impact the labor market that can generate these increases in unemployment. We would want to understand what are the sources of this increase in unemployment and how these shocks that hit the labor market propagate and lead to large increases in unemployment. So these are the type of questions that we we'll want to be um, able to answer. Okay, um, and you can also see that 
if we look at the past um, you know 70 years here on the US labor market the range of fluctuation of the unemployment rate is actually um, quite large the unemployment rate was as low as 2.5% um, in the 50s and it reached, reached almost 15% just in the last few months. We have a massive range of fluctuations. The amount of um, un, uh, unused labor on the labor market, the uh, amount of idle resources on the labor market that unemployment captures is just uh, very valuable. So we want a model that can, um, that can generate that. So, uh, but now, if you um, think about the matching model that we've described, something that uh, you must have noticed is that in that model, everything is going to be driven by uh, the vacant jobs that firms are trying to fill, by the vacancies that firms advertise. You know, the posting of the vacancies, that's the key, um, what we would call, endogenous uh, variable in the model. That's the key decision by actors of the labor market, firms here, that's going to drive everything in the model. Because in our model so far, um, workers are pretty passive. They decide to enter the labor market, and then once they enter the labor market, you know, they search with some fixed amount, and then randomly they can either find a job or not find a job, and if they find a job, they start working. Then after a while, they may lose their job, go back to unemployment, search for a job, um, and you know, wait to get a new a new job and move back to employment and so on and so forth. The only actor in the labor market that really has to make a decision um, and adjust their decision based on conditions in this simple version of the model are firms, um, because firms are always trying to maximize um, profits. They maximize profit by choosing the optimal size for their firm by choosing the optimal number of workers that they want and the way that they adjust that uh, employment level in the firm is by adjusting the number of vacancies that they post. So if they advertise a lot of vacancies, the firm is going to grow and become larger. If they post very few vacancies, the firm, you know, through the job separation that always happens, the firm is going to shrink in size and become smaller. So these vacancies um, are really um, critical in explaining um, fluctuations you know, and in explaining how the labor market works um, according to the matching model. Um, and, but it turns out with that, as we've seen before, if you look at the vacancy rate and if you look at the unemployment rate, these two things are very, very correlated. They move together in a very specific fashion. Um, you know, it's not just uh, two variables that have no connection with each other. You remember we saw that vacancy rate and unemployment rate are tightly connected through a beverage curve. So let me um, just show you again the beverage curve that we have talked about for the US. So you can see it here. Um, so this is the, uh, the US beverage curve. Um, so here it's just from 1951 to 1969, but what you can see so you have an unemployment rate on the x-axis and the vacancy rate on the y-axis in log, um, just a simple transformation to uh, obtain you know, linear relations instead of um, uh, convex relations. Um, so we put a log-log graph here. And you can see that the unemployment rate and the vacancy rate, they are moving along uh, almost linear uh, lines. So when the uh, unemployment rate is high, the vacancy rate is low. When the vacancy rate is high, the unemployment rate is low. And there is really this tight connection that's given by the beverage curve. Remember, you can, uh, so you, know, you can read this like this. You always start like this. And then, um, you know, so here, the economy is doing worse. So the unemployment rate, as the economy is getting better, the unemployment rate falls, vacancy rate is going up. Here, the economy is doing worse. The unemployment is growing, the vacancy rate is falling till you get to that point here, and so on and so forth. And, you know, and then the, uh, the economy continues to move along that beverage curve. But you have a really clear relationship uh, here between vacan uh, vacancies and, and unemployment. So, um, and so this is just um, you know, the beginning from the 50s to the end of the 60s. Here, the curve continues from the 1970 to 1989. And again, you can see this relationship. Um, so the, you know, the relationship is kind of moving over time, but 
But nevertheless, during a given period, uh, you have this clear negative relationship between vacancy and, uh, and unemployment. So here it continues, 19 and 2000. And here you can see the Great Recession. During the Great Recession, the unemployment rate increased and increased and increased. And as unemployment was becoming higher and higher, vacancy rates were dropping. And here now you have the big recovery from the recession 2010-2019. So here, as the vacancy rate was falling, as the unemployment rate was falling, the vacancy rate was going up and up and up. But here, it's, you can see it's almost a linear relation between unemployment rate and uh, vacancy rate in a log-log um, diagram. And so, when we try to explain the fluctuation in unemployment, we also want to explain this tight negative relationship between unemployment and vacancies, uh, this beverage curve. We want the beverage curve to be a feature of our model. Okay, um, so now the question is, you know, what are the shocks that may cause this fluctuation and how can our model uh, give us, can, how can our model generate such fluctuations? Right, so, Right, so uh, if we want to explain and generate this unemployment fluctuation, we have to look at how unemployment is determined in the model to try to figure out what is driving the um, level of unemployment. So our goal here is to explain the unemployment fluctuation that we've just seen. So large fluctuations in unemployment large fluctuations in unemployment we want to be able to explain and in fact what we've seen is that in recession we know that unemployment is high in expansion, we know that unemployment is low. Um, so, on top of it, we want the unemployment rate so not only to move a lot, but we want the unemployment rate to be um, counter cyclical. So, what that means is that we want it to move, uh, um, the unemployment rate to move against the cycle so that when the cycle is doing well, when output is high, unemployment is low. When uh, we're in a bad times, output is low, we want unemployment to be high. So we want um, the unemployment rate to be counter-cyclical. What we also want to be able to explain is that the unemployment rate and the uh, vacancy rate are negatively correlated. And this, um, of course, once we have this negative relationship, that's going to allow us to generate a beverage curve. Okay. Um, so this is another thing that we want. So we want to be able to have large fluctuation and we want to be able to have a negative relation between unemployment and vacancies. If we can get that, we get a pretty nice model. We've got something that explains not only why unemployment exists, but also why unemployment is counter-cyclical and why we have a beverage curve. And then, you know, we can be pretty happy with what we have. And we'll see that um, with a matching model, we'll be able to actually generate um, this type of results. Um, 